Can I be genuinely ambitious? Should I set big goals? Should I pursue them with my whole heart? Or should I just back away from those things because they might seem prideful and that might not be Christian? Hi, my name is Father Gregory Pine and this is Ascension Presents. In Christian conversations, we talk often of the virtue of humility. It's a good thing to have a, a keen sense of who you are and who you're not, so that way you don't become prideful. Because when you're prideful, then you think yourself better than you are, you go after things which might not be in fact for you. Here, I think we have an excellent example in the life of St. Augustine. So St. Augustine, you know, from a young age was a catechumen, but he held off his baptism for a while because he wasn't wholly convinced of the Christian faith. And during that time, he advanced his secular career as a teacher of rhetoric. And so he went from his hometown of Tagast to the big city of Carthage and across, like across the Mediterranean Sea to Rome and Milan. And in each place, he was known for his excellence and he advanced his, his career step by step. But in coming to the Christian faith, he had a kind of qualm of conscience. He wasn't sure that what he was doing was in fact good. So taking his example and the way that he sorted it out, we too can reflect on our own pursuits and come to a better appreciation of the glory of God and the salvation of souls and our contribution to it. So first I would say, God does not want you to back off from big pursuits. He wants you to do great things worthy of great honors precisely because they're great and because you as a human being were made for such pursuits. There's a virtue which is called magnanimity and it informs just such things. So too, there's a vice which is opposed to magnanimity, which has a silly name, pusillanimity, you can say that five times fast, which means backing off from great things and falling into a kind of like lethargy of soul because you're not actually stretching, you're not actually pushing for the things that God has ready for those who love them. But then I think that we wanna refine and just, you can't simply say, go for great things because God wants great things because we can lose ourselves. And St. Augustine was conscious of just such a fact. And so we don't wanna fall into ambition and we also don't wanna fall into vainglory. Well, what are those things? Vainglory is when you pursue it just because you get fame or you get glory or you get honor. And it's vain because it's empty. We want our pursuits to be full, which is to say full of God's purpose, full of God's meaning, as we step into our vocations, as we have a keener appreciation of for who we are and what we're meant to do as that pertains to God's plan. So too with ambition. Uh, sometimes when we do something excellent or glorious, we have a tendency to keep it to ourselves or just refer it to ourselves, but it's intended to be shared, to refer to be referred to God as its source and as its goal, but also to be referred to those other people with whom we live uh, for their service, uh, for their upbuilding, for their edification. So when we return then to the witness of St. Augustine, he found uh, just such an orientation in his Christian conversion because he was able to do even greater things than he had done previously as a bishop, as a monk, as one sent in service uh, in his preaching and teaching. Uh, and we recall his name because of the 5.5 million words that he penned, uh, because of the great deeds of sanctity for which he was well known. But ultimately it was because he referred it to God, he made it of service to others, he pursued it because it was great, conscious always of the fact that it was God who gave it, it was God who ultimately merited it, and it was God who perfected it. Speaking of St. Augustine, so you came to Catholic Classics perhaps in season one with reading uh, The Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. Well, here we are back for season two with the Confessions of St. Augustine. So if you're interested in hearing his story of how he came to the fullness of faith, how he embraced his vocation and did so in a way that was a wholly ambitious way, uh, then join us for season two of Catholic Classics. Go to ascensionpress.com slash Catholic Classics and we'll look forward to chatting with you for season two.